Hey, good afternoon. Uh, you're watching the Midday News on Rajya Sabha Television. All the developing news stories at the top of this hour coming up ahead. First up, the headlines. Naveen Patnaik sworn in as Odisha Chief Minister for fifth time in a row. 20 ministers, including 10 new faces, take oath. Prime Minister Modi congratulates Patnaik, assures him of all support from the centre. BJP leader Pema Khandu takes oath as Arunachal Pradesh Chief Minister for second term. Governor B.D. Mishra administers oath of office to Chief Minister, Council of Ministers in Itanagar. ED acts in National Herald case to take possession of Haryana land worth over 64 crore rupees allotted to Associated Journals Limited. Issues a fresh summon to Robert Wadra in money laundering case. Preparations in full swing for Prime Minister Narendra Modi's swearing in tomorrow. BIMSTEC leaders, Kyrgyz and Mauritian premiers confirm attendance. Families of Bengal BJP workers killed in poll violence also invited. And Mamata Banerjee reshuffles West Bengal cabinet after two TMC MLAs, 50 councillors join the BJP, takes away portfolios of former Forest Minister Binay Parman and Western Regional Development Minister Shanti Ram Mahato. The top story this afternoon, Naveen Patnaik took oath as Odisha's Chief Minister for the fifth consecutive term today. Patnaik was administered the oath of office and secrecy by Governor Ganeshi Lal in a grand ceremony at the exhibition ground in Bhuvneshwar today. His team of 20 ministers, including 10 new faces, also took oath. A large number of BJD supporters and leaders attended the function. The BJD, which won 112 seat in the 147 member assembly, has been in power in Odisha since the year 2000. It is the first time that Patnaik has taken oath in an open public ground in all the four times earlier, that is in 2000, 2004, 2009 and 2014. Naveen Patnaik was sworn in at the Raj Bhavan. And President Ramnath Kovind has congratulated Naveen Patnaik on taking oath as the Chief Minister of Odisha. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also congratulated Naveen Patnaik in a Twitter message. He also assured him of complete cooperation from the centre in working for Odisha's progress. I, Naveen Patnaik, do swear in the name of God that I will bear, bear true faith and allegiance to the constitution of India as by law established, that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India, that I will faithfully and conscientiously discharge my duties as Chief Minister for the State of Odisha, and that I will do right to all manners of people in accordance with the Constitution and the law without fear or favour, affection or ill will. And BJP leader Pema Khandu has been sworn in as the Chief Minister of Arunachal Pradesh for the second time. The swearing-in ceremony was held at uh, the Dorji Khandu Convention Centre in Itanagar. Retired Governor Brigadier B.D. Mishra administered the oath of office to Khandu and his Council of Ministers. Remember, BJP won 41 out of the 60 Assembly seats in Arunachal Pradesh. For the first time, I, Pema Khandu, do swear in the name of God that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established, that I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of India, that I will faithfully and conscientiously discharge my duties as the Chief Minister of the State of Arunachal Pradesh and that I will do right to all manner of people in accordance with the Constitution and the law without 
fear or favor, affection or ill will. And the BIMSTEC leaders have confirmed their participation in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's swearing-in ceremony tomorrow. External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar said that the President of Bangladesh, Mohammed Abdul Hamid, Sri Lankan President of Maitripala Sarisena, President of Myanmar, Yuen Mint, Prime Minister of Nepal, K.P. Sharma Oli, Prime Minister of Bhutan, Dr. Lote Shering, and Special Envoy of Thailand have confirmed their participation. Mauritius Prime Minister Pravind Kumar Jagnauth and President of a Kyrgyz Republic have also confirmed their participation at the event. Remember, India had invited the leaders of the BIMSTEC countries for the swearing-in ceremony, focusing on the neighbourhood-first policy. India underscoring its neighbourhood-first policy by inviting the heads of state of BIMSTEC nations for the swearing-in ceremony of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This is an event of uh, great uh, joy and uh, celebration for the ruling party, which has just re won the election again. So it is natural that you invite friendly countries, especially the neighbor neighboring countries, to join in the celebrations. And it's also an expression of the intent of the government to pursue further uh, friendly policies with these countries to strengthen relations, especially economic and technical cooperation with these countries. Pakistan is the neighbour who does not find a place on the invitation list. Underlining India's stand on zero tolerance for nations supporting terrorism as state policy. With Pakistan, our relations are not particularly good right now. And there is no reason to uh, ask them to come and join in celebrations in India. Uh, especially when they are likely to strike a discordant note. Uh, so, the uh, government decided to extend the invitation to BIMSTEC countries and to two other countries, Mauritius and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Mauritius because it's a very close, very friendly country and Kyrgyzstan in its capacity as the current chair of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. BIMSTEC heads of governments were first invited out of turn in 2016 by India for the BRICS summit in Goa. BIMSTEC is one of these uh, organizations that India has formed uh, of countries um, around the Bay of Bengal. It's called the Bay of Bengal Multisectoral uh, initiative. BIMSTEC has uh, seven members, uh, India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, uh, Bhutan, Nepal in the north, Sri Lanka, uh, Myanmar and Thailand. So these seven countries constitute, uh, what's common among them is that they are all around the Bay of Bengal and they represent the eastern uh, part of the look east policy of India to strengthen uh, relations not only, uh, well, especially with the countries towards the east. BIMSTEC stands for the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Technical and Economic Cooperation. Established on 6 June 1997, it did not get much attention since most members belong to SARC or ASEAN grouping. With inputs from Asta Kulshresht, Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And terming India as a great ally, the Donald Trump administration has said that the US will continue to work closely with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The U.S. asserted uh, that it was confident uh, in uh, the fairness uh, and uh, integrity of the Lok Sabha elections in India. Donald Trump of, uh, uh, and uh, Vice President of the country Mike Pence and U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo congratulated Prime Minister Modi and the BJP on the spectacular electoral victory. State Department uh, spokesperson uh, said that Pompeo was uh, looking forward to have a robust discussion with his Indian counterpart on a wide range of issues. Meanwhile, BJP has also invited the families of over 50 party workers who were killed in the incidents of violence in West Bengal for the swearing-in ceremony of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And according to reports, at least 51 BJP workers were killed in West Bengal in the past six years during Panchayat elections and the recently concluded Lok Sabha elections as well. And West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee is also expected to attend the event on 30th of May. Our colleague Akhilesh Suman is now joining us live for more on this story. Akhilesh, now a day to go for the swearing-in ceremony of Narendra Modi for a second term. And of course, we understand that BIMSTEC leaders, apart from the Mauritian and Kyrgyzstan premiers, have confirmed their participation. But uh, families of uh, West Bengal BJP workers uh, who have been uh, killed in uh, poll violence have also been invited just give us more details. 
Right. Uh, you know that uh, this is the new thing that has been added in swearing in ceremony of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Last time also that has happened that the Prime Minister had invited all the SAC leaders. But this time, other than SAC leaders, you know, the uh, leader of a host country of SCO, uh, this is the uh, first time that this is happening. So I think Prime Minister is giving uh, equal importance to the SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, that is one of the major organizations of, you know, Central Asian countries and China. India, Russia, and even Pakistan is part of it. So I think it is a major outreach uh, and giving respect to Central Asian countries. Other than that, you know that uh, uh, West Bengal. West Bengal is a peculiar thing also. I confirm to the West Bengal BJP functionaries that uh, yes, uh, victim, uh, families of victims of uh, BJP workers who had been uh, killed um, by um, uh, goons in West Bengal, they are coming. And the total number of invitees are 72, 72 numbers of victims of 48 members of BJP are coming. So just recount it, 48 members, uh, BJP has said that 48 members had been killed uh, in West Bengal in the political mm -hmm. violence and their family members counting 72 have already arrived in Delhi. So I think this is one of the major things giving respect to the victims of political violence in West Bengal. And you know that uh, the way, uh, you know, West Bengal has voted for BJP in, the, in this election. I think this is one of the greatest respect to the BJP workers and people of West Bengal that BJP is showing and Prime Minister Narendra Modi is showing respect to them. So uh, I think this is, uh, uh, you know, that uh, I think it will be welcomed in West Bengal. So other Absolutely. than that, you know, the Mauritius uh, Prime Minister is also one of the major attractions. And Mauritius, uh, we can say that Mauritius is an uh, evergreen friend of India and they have close uh, family bonds with India. And most of the Mauritian, uh, you know, politicians are are closely associated with India. So this yes. is also a major outreach of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And uh, just uh, giving you a sense of how the, um, you know, oath-taking ceremony will be held. You know, the ceremony will be uh, uh, taking place in the forecourt of, uh, you know, uh, President Gosh, House. You see yes. the big stairs and the, on those stairs and there is a down, uh, there will be placing of chairs. Uh, it is expected that more than 6,000 invitees will be there. And this is the largest number any Prime Minister is uh, uh, at the time of oath taking ceremony and okay. after that there will be uh, arrangement of refreshment for all the invitees and you know uh, President Ramnath Kovind will also meet the dignities who are coming from, uh, from abroad. So I think uh, this is a major outreach exercise both in uh, domestic ways and right. also in a foreign policy level. You know, Absolutely. Well. So the Rashtrapati Bhavan gets uh, ready to host a significant ceremony on Thursday when President Ramnath Kovind administered the oath of office and secrecy to Narendra Modi and other members of Union Council of Ministers. Thank you so much, Shakhilesh, for all those updates on that big story. And the government is uh, aiming for a double-digit growth uh, by 2022 by focusing on private investments, uh, also ease of doing business and creating more jobs through tourism and infrastructure. This uh, has been revealed by Niti Aayog Vice Chairman Rajiv Kumar in an exclusive interview to Rajasabha TV. Rajiv Kumar lays out the blueprint of the key priority areas of Narendra Modi government. Let's take a listen. We are preparing that. We are well on, we are really focused on preparing a vision, which is for 2047, and where, where we want uh, the economy, and we are trying to lay out uh, you know, the contours of what the size of the economy would be, uh, what's the sort of rate of growth that we require for that, and, and, and uh, you know, which are the sectors you know, which will grow and what will be our share in the world trade, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a, that's a, that's a project that we are undertaking. You know that we did one for the strategy for New India at 75, you know, which is, you know, the economy for 9, 20, 2022. So that document is already ready. That's with the government. And there are several uh, suggestions, recommendations there already for this government to act upon. Uh, so, and, and, uh, you talked about the challenges, and I think I did mention the challenge, which is that one of the biggest challenges is, uh, for example, for me, uh, apart from investment and agriculture that I mentioned, is to uh, tackle malnourishment in the country. You know, I mean, a very large percentage, of almost about 36% of our children are undernourished, and 50% of our women are anemic. And I think that's one very big challenge. That 
Well, you can watch this entire interview tonight at 10 p.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Don't forget to tune in then. And that is uh, the this is time. We'll take a very short break here. More news on the other side. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rouse and Pereira. From policy decisions to global economic issues. What shape is the world economy going to take really? The Chinese slowed down, occurs the rest of the world also will also fall. From landmark judgments to international relations. Is there any bank who will open an account for a transgender person with transgender identity? Absolutely not. A debate show like none other. Uh, maybe I will announce here, and no one before you knows, that Mr. Modi will visit Palestine. The Big Picture with Frank Rausen Pereira at these times on Rajya Sabha Television. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to host Chinese President Xi Jinping this year for an informal summit after meeting uh, several uh, times over the past year to try to diffuse tension. However, the date and the venue of the informal summit is yet to be finalized. This has been revealed by the Ministry of External Affairs. MEA spokesperson Ravish Kumar said that the both sides are in touch with each other through diplomatic channels to finalize the details of the upcoming summit in India. Modi and Xi held an informal um, summit in Wuhan in China in uh, April last year, months after the Doklam standoff, resolving uh, to open a new chapter in their historic ties. They also directed their ministries uh, to militaries to boost coordination along the border. Remember, in the month of June last year, PM Modi had travelled to the Chinese city of Xingdao to attend the SCO summit. He had also held talks with Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the summit as well. And a news from West Bengal now, where in a major political upheaval in the state, three of the MLAs and 50 municipal councillors have joined the BJP. The MLAs include TMC's Tushar Kanti Patacharya, BJP's leader Mukul Roy's son, who was suspended from the TMC, and CPIM's Debendra Nath Roy. The MLAs joined the Saffron Party at a press conference in Delhi, where BJP General Secretary and its in charge for West Bengal, Kailash Vijayvargye, and Mukul Roy told the media that more MLAs from the TMC are expected to join the party in the coming days. Now, with over 50 councillors joining the BJP, the party has got a majority in at least three municipal councils in West Bengal. Remember, this move comes days after the Lok Sabha results that dealt a blow to the TMC, which fell to 22 seats from 34, while the BJP's tally zoomed to 18 from just two in 2014. हर महीने अलग-अलग चरणों में जॉइनिंग का कार्यक्रम होगा। ये पहले चरण में तीन विधायक और 50 काउंसलर हैं, तीन नगर पालिकाओं पे हमारा कब्जा है, जिला पंचायत पे भी हमारा कब्जा होगा, और अब धीरे-धीरे धीरे करके ममता जी के आतंक से, ममता जी की तानाशाही से परेशान होकर जिन लोगों का टीएमसी में दम घुट रहा है, वो सारे लो BJP में आना चाहते हैं। जो संस्कृति है, भारतीय जनता पार्टी जो क्रिश्ची है, ये हम लोग बर्दाश्त करने नहीं चाहता है। हम लोग खून का विश्वास नहीं करा है। देखिए आप तो जानता है, चुनाव होने के बाद दो खून हुआ, उसके पहले हमारा आशी कार्यकर्ता खून हुआ, तो हम लोग खून का राजनीति विश्वास करते नहीं है। तो हम इस तरीका से बोल रहा है ये हिंसा के लिए जो कोई दाई है तो तीनोंमुली दाई है। चंदन घोष तो भाजपा वर्कर है, तो बोल रहा है चंदन घोष वह है, सुन्टू घोष वह है चकदा में, तो ये दो घून जो हुआ ना 
हिंसा तो बोल रहा है हम लोग कर रहा है लेकिन हम लोग कर रहा नहीं है जो कर रहा है वो तृणमूल ही कर रहा है अरे उसका साथ पुलिस है Meanwhile, the TMC likened its MLAs who joined the BJP to rats abandoning a ship, sensing danger, and said that people will give them a befitting reply. And hours after TMC MLAs and councillors joined the BJP, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee made major changes in her cabinet. Transport Minister Suvendu Adhikari was entrusted with the two more departments of Irrigation and the Water Resources Investigation and Development, while. Uh, Pratya Basu has been given the additional charge of the forest department along with his portfolio of science and technology and biotechnology. The minister for fire department, Sujit Bose, was made the minister of state for the forest department and portfolios of several other ministers have also been rejected. Former forest department minister, Binay Krishn Barman and western region development minister, Shanti Ram Mahato, were kept as ministers without any portfolio. Meanwhile, the turmoil within the Congress party continues with Rahul Gandhi insisting on quitting as the party president, taking moral responsibility for the Congress's poll debacle. Senior party leaders are uh, now trying to convince Rahul Gandhi to change his mind about quitting as the party president. In fact, allies DMK and BJD also have urged the Congress president not to quit. Rahul Gandhi, however, has refused to go back on the decision that uh, he had conveyed to the party at Congress Working Committee's uh, post-mortem meet on Saturday. Moral ground pe uh, istifa de rahe hain aur unko ye bhi ehsas hai ke Congress party ke bahut saare saathiyon ne jitni taqat ke saath khada hona chahiye tha, itni taqat ke saath nahi khade huye. Lekin aaj कांग्रेस पार्टी को राहुल गांधी की जरूरत है जितनी जरूरत आज है राहुल गांधी की शायद इससे पहले इतनी नहीं थी पूरी कांग्रेस उनके साथ है उनकी लीडरशिप के अंदर हम आगे बढ़ेंगे पूरी मेहनत करेंगे आगे पांच साल का वक्त हमारे पास है जो कमियां रही हैं उन कमियों को दूर करेंगे और एक बार फिर चूंकि चुनाव हारे हैं हमने अपने दिलों को नहीं हारा है after the colossal electoral defeat, the Congress has been riven by internal turmoil. After Punjab, Jharkhand and Assam, Maharashtra Congress Chief Ashok Chavan, MPCC Chief Kamal Nath and Uttar Pradesh State Chief Raj Babar have also offered to step down. And the Congress's uh, crisis in Rajasthan also deepened uh, with uh, two more leaders voicing their concerns. And Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot said that Rahul Gandhi has... Uh, the right to change the organization. All right, let's get to some other news. In the National Herald case, the Enforcement Directorate will soon take possession of the land allotted to Associated Journals Limited, the group that runs the National Herald newspaper. Now, the land in Panchkula, which is worth about 64 point nine. Crore rupees was allotted to AJL by the Haryana government in the year 2005. And uh, the adjudicating authority of uh, PMLA has now ordered for the confirmation of the provincial attachment order. Now, this after the EDOE issued a provisional attachment order under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act on 1st of December last year for attaching the plot. The same day, the CBI filed a charge sheet against former Haryana Chief Minister Bhupinder Singh Hooda and others for allegedly using fraudulent means to allot the land to AJL. The AJL is reportedly controlled by senior Congress leaders, including the members of the Gandhi family. And the Enforcement Directorate has issued a fresh summon to Robert Watra. Brother-in-law of Congress President Rahul Gandhi, ED has asked Robert Wadra to appear before it on Thursday in connection with a money laundering case linked to the purchase of alleged illegal assets. Last week, the ED had sought uh, the cancellation of the anticipatory bail given to Robert Wadra in the case, after which the Delhi High Court issued a notice uh, to him seeking his response. The ED case against Robert Wadra relates to the allegations of money laundering on the purchase of a London-based property located uh, in uh, uh, Bryanston Square worth uh, 1.9 million British pounds 
which is allegedly owned by him. The agency had told a Delhi court that it has received information about uh, various uh, new properties in London which belong to Robert Wadra. And a uh, big story coming in at, at this hour, Arun Jaitley has uh, requested uh, to not to be given any responsibility in the new government due to his health issues. Let's uh, go across to our colleague uh, Akhilesh Suman who is joining us from the newsroom. Akhilesh, uh, of course uh, there has been a huge talk about the portfolios that are going to be given uh, in the Narendra Modi cabinet uh, this time. Uh, and uh, Arun Jaitley has requested not to be given any responsibility. What more can you tell us? You know that uh, since yesterday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and BJP President Amit Shah was in conversations with uh, various stakeholders uh, who could be uh, joined as a minister. And uh, he was also talking to Arun Jaitley, in, uh, including even the NDA, other NDA allies. And today you know that uh, other NDA allies are also meeting Amit Shah. And in between, uh, Arun Jaitley has written a letter to Prime Minister not to be given any responsibility in the new government. And I think, uh, you know, it was a big dilemma for BJP leadership that about the health of Arun Jaitley, uh, that uh, how uh, he will cope up with the new responsibility. And uh, mm. Arun Jaitley, who was uh, not participating in general activity during the elections, but mm. he was very active through his blogs, through his writings. And uh, you can say that he was one of the major campaigners, uh, campaigners uh, through the social media for BJP. And uh, uh, Arun Jaitley uh, was almost present every day uh, through his blogs and other social, uh, social media mediums. Yes. So I think uh, everyone was expecting that Arun Jaitley uh, will join in the cabinet and he will take the responsibility the way he has uh, shouldered uh, various responsibilities in the last government mm -hmm. and very uh, important. But Arun Jaitley has felt that uh, the health conditions are not adequate enough to uh, you know, bear a major responsibility and that is why he has written later to Prime Minister that he should not be given any responsibility since he becomes you know, healthy, properly healthy. He has yes. said that he needs a proper time, he needs enough time to get uh, his health back and I think that Prime Minister Nayan Modi and BJP President mm. Amit Shah may mm. consider his you know, proposal that how he will be uh, taken care of in that way. Absolutely. So he, there's a lot of talk of uh, how will be the cabinet looking like. Uh, uh, of course, uh, at this moment what we know is that Arun Jaitley has requested not to be given any responsibility in this cabinet. Uh, we have to wait and watch uh, what happens and uh, now who will uh, take his place. Uh, but of course, uh, this will be taken care of uh, tomorrow when uh, the swearing in ceremony takes place. Thank you so much, uh, Akhilesh, for all those updates are there. And uh, with that, we wrap up this edition of Midday News. Thanks for watching.